I'm here right now in Berlin, Germany, where we have the chance to talk to and interview individuals that we helped find safety. It's a really exciting time for me because we don't always get a chance to meet or talk to the people that we help. This is a really important opportunity to understand the challenges people faced while they were trying to find safety, some of the opportunities and challenges they've had resettling so that we can do our work better. What was life like in Jamaica? My experience being gay in my country. For me, fitting in, into society was very difficult. I was a victim of violence in Jamaica. Police do not like gay people. The politician, the church. It, it was very hard from being a batman to a fish, to a fag, to even worse derogatory things. I have been beaten by a gang of boys just because I was dating a butch lesbian girl. A man come upon me. He was near the cut in my face. I get 38 stitches. It, every day I just wake up and feel like my life is at risk. If I can go to a certain community and come back alive, it's always a constant thought. I was chased more than three times. Close, very close to death. People threw stone at me. Dead body boy for dead. And when I came out of my bedroom, I realized that my house was burglarized. If it wasn't for the burglar bars on my house, I am not sure what would have happened to me. I'm not sure where I would have been today. A group of my friends were in a park and we were talking, and some guys overheard our conversation, and then they said, "Oh, these guys are some body man." and they started to chase us down and throwing stone at us. Well, safety, I had to run. Safety wasn't a protection from the police. I just have to find my way back home. But when I look back, I saw, I saw some guys. I know I'll have to run for it. And a man attacked me and threw acid on me. And I go to the, uh, look in some police station, make a statement, and there's no police look at me. They say, everybody boy, leave the station. And that day, I said, I tell myself, I have to leave Jamaica. If I stay in Jamaica, I want to die. We were literally stoned in a church. The church is supposed to be a safe haven for all people. Burn our clothes, lock up in jailers. The most terrified I've ever been in all my life. We go to the police station, we don't get no justice. Seeing men with machetes, baseball bats, I mean, when I felt like I had no other choice but to leave Jamaica is when I realized that my sexuality is starting to affect my daughter. I knew I had to leave Jamaica all because of constant threats. I was afraid that I was going to die because of my sexual orientation. I just had made up my mind and said, listen, I think if I, if I stay here, then I'm just going to be dead. How I felt knowing that Rainbow Railroad was going to help me, I don't even think I can find a word to describe it. The day I got that email was, was the best time of my life. It was like, freedom, it was like that. Somebody finally cared, somebody finally say she don't deserve this. I was that be a dead man now. Everything was all hopeless and suddenly one day got that call that my life will be forever changed without having any worry, having to worry about anyone trying to chase me, calling me demeaning words. I want to get my behinds so I can work in the hospital. Life now in a safe country is like a dream coming true. I advise people to donate because when you do that, you save one life or two life because someone back then saved my life. What I would say to the person that helped me to get here, I am forever grateful. Because of you, I can live my life freely my daughter can live up to her full potential without worrying about being bullied. I, I don't have to really think, look even over my shoulder anymore. And thank God this day now, I'm in a better life, better treatment, 
from Jamaica. You know, I can now live my life the best way. I am really, really grateful. It's a dream come true, really. That's all I can say.